Hi and welcome to Synapse. In today's video tutorial, uh, we're going to be learning about a very important and high yielding topic from cardiovascular system that happens to be heart sounds and murmurs. Okay, so let's begin. Heart sounds and murmurs. I sound a little different today because I have mild uh, laryngitis associated with pharyngitis so please bear with me on this um, okay let's get into the topic proper in the previous video on arterial pulse okay uh, we have learned about the cardiac cycle okay so if if you're new here just go back check out the video on arterial pulse and they to be precise the first six and a half minutes i guess okay then you can come back and watch this video so we have discussed the cardiac cycle we know the uh, sequence of events that happens during a normal uh, cardiac cycle so what we have learned there is just in a uh, brief okay there is something called s1 that's the first heart sound and there is something called s2 which is the second heart sound so we have learned that in between S1 and S2, you have systole, okay, and that's ventricular systole, and from S2 to S1 again of the next cycle, we have the diastole, okay. So this is how we are going to divide the cardiac cycle. So um, we have S3 and S4, okay, the third and the fourth heart sounds. Uh, what is important about them is... Um, S3 is it okay how does S3 actually uh, produce how is it produced so what happens is when the ventricle okay let's say this is a heart okay that's the HF yeah, this is the ventricle now for some reason the ventricle is not contracting okay and then there is a lot of blood already you know uh, here okay so the diastolic volume okay uh, in the ventricle is already so high so during the um, what happens when when the atria contracts right? so that is a last phase of the ventricular diastolic correct so when this contracts and pushes extra blood in here which okay where the uh, ventricle gets overloaded over distended or something like that so what happens is that the already existing blood okay and then this excess of blood flowing into the ventricle will produce um, um, a kind of vibration okay so basically we have learned that heart sounds are nothing but vibrations that are tra trans uh, traversing along the ventricular wall and uh, the uh, uh, along the um, major arteries and so on so this is also a similar phenomenon so this blood which is flowing in will um, kind of vibrate the ventricular walls okay so that is how s3 is produced now s3 is physiological in case of um, uh, children okay children and in pregnant females okay in pregnant female okay so what really happens here is the output is increased so the heart is the rate is higher and, and it's the active phase of life, correct? So hence S3 could be physiological in this set of people, but if found uh, in uh, adults, males, okay, it's all, it's, it's pathological. Then S4, S4 occurs when the atria contracts forcefully against an hypertrophied uh, ventricle, okay? So this atria now has to contract okay it has to contract excessively because now the ventricular ventricular wall is hypertrophied okay or okay not this is not the only reason if the valve here okay if the valve here is obstructed stenosed right so what happens then is that the atria has to put in extra pressure extra uh, work to push the last that that's the 30 percent of the volume that actually you know completes the um and diastolic volume okay within the ventricles so that extra amount of work needs to be done by the atria will manifest as forceful contraction of the atria which will result in the production of s4 and uh, mind you s4 is always pathological okay always 
pathological. So we have studied two conditions where it can S3 can be physiological, but presence of S4 is always pathological. Okay. So now let us go back and we'll study about the okay. Now we have studied about heart sounds uh, and we need to know the uh, auscultation areas also. Okay, the auscultation areas. So this must have been taught in the clinics. Okay, so I'll just um, briefly tell it. Okay, uh, left. Okay, let's start with right. So right second intercostal space. Okay, intercostal space uh, is going to be your aortic area. Okay, and okay so left second intercostal space is going to be your pulmonary area okay and then we know that the fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line mid clavicular line okay mid clavicular line uh, is going to be our mitral area basically it corresponds with the uh, apex cardiac apex okay then same fifth intercostal space okay N uh, near the the left sternal border here is your tricuspid tricuspid area okay so there are like a number of uh, pictures that are, are available online that you can check out so as to have a pictorial memory of uh, these facts okay and um, now what is to be remembered here is i want to mark this out that it is right and it is aortic it's left and pulmonary so most of the students <clears throat> what they do is okay right side of the heart so it is pulmonary area so right intercostal space is the pulmonary area so i want to highlight this one fact okay that many of you might have noticed i just don't want you to get this wrong uh, right is aortic because um, the reason for this uh, is the embryology the development of the heart so if you know that the um, uh, what happens is that the aorta and the pulmonary artery so it's like they wind around uh, the each other so basically there is that septum okay it's a spiral septum it's not a straight septum so basically it's a class for another day but uh, what i would want you to do is open up embryology books okay embryology of heart and just check out the development of your um, great vessels okay so great vessels the key here is that the septum is not straight it's a spiral septum okay so search up for this keyword and you'll find the answer so okay so let's move on okay so now that we have finished uh, our heart sounds we'll get into the murmurs proper and uh, first of all there are some terms that uh, the classic textbooks mention so whose understanding is important so uh, based on the intensity okay so based on intensity of murmur we have certain terms okay so what are the terms so first we're going to say something called as the crescendo pattern second is decrescendo pattern and third is a crescendo decrescendo pattern okay so i'll just um, tell about this but before this um, i'll just tell what exactly is a murmur okay now blood flow in the heart or wherever in uh, in the whole of the uh, vascular system is going to be linear okay so there's a laminar flow okay if i must say this okay it's going to be a laminar flow like a smooth okay no turbulence whatsoever but what happens is that in a diseased condition okay let us say there is an obstruction or there is some kind of stenosis okay so what what happens then or there's an abnormal cardiac activity so what happens then is that the blood okay let's say that okay I'll just use the same color if there is let's say an obstruction like this okay narrowing 
Now what happens is that here, you see this turbulence? You see this turbulence? Okay, so now this abnormal flow of blood is going to cause again vibration of the ventricular walls and the great arteries. So that is what is going to result in a murmur. Okay, it's a murmur. Okay, and this is this straight laminar flow, normal flow. Okay, so that is the whole uh, logic behind murmurs. Okay, now what about this uh, names that I have written here? It's very simple to understand. Crescendo is that the intensity of the murmur will murmur will go on increasing. Okay, now decrescendo is the exact opposite of that. So the intensity will go on reducing. So they are smart by this time, so you would have figured out the crescendo decrescendo pattern. It's just like this. It will go on increasing and then it will go on decreasing. Okay, that's that. So, um, next time when they say this term, these terms, use these terms, it's pretty simple, right? So, intensity increasing, intensity decreasing, increasing, then decreasing. Fine. Now, there's one more term, okay, that needs to be mentioned here is span. Pan systolic and holo systolic. Holo systolic. Okay, so holo meaning complete. Okay, it is the intensity remains same throughout the system. Okay, this is system. Intensity remains same. That's holo systolic. And uh, uh, even even pan systolic it remains same. But the point here is that it's it's span. Matlab it is uh, um, present during the whole of the systole, okay, between S1, S2, if we are saying this, it is present throughout your systole, okay, that is span systole, it's going to tell you the span, okay, of the uh, murmur, or how long you are going to hear the murmur, okay, so next, let us move on to certain examples, okay, of murmurs, we will study that in detail now, Okay, so uh, before that, they, they usually classify murmurs. Okay, you start studying them in textbooks as systolic murmurs, and they're going to divide it as diastolic murmurs. Okay, uh, then they're going to say that in this only they have further, further divisions like early, mid, and late. Okay, so but what I would suggest is this is to be studied later on. Okay, so let us just get the concepts right okay and then we it becomes very easy to list uh, the examples under these okay so we're going to come back to this slide a little later okay fine so now let's just take certain conditions and we'll start uh, seeing what exactly happens there now if we're talking about as okay that is aortic stenosis now what happens in aortic stenosis is that the ventricle is going to push blood into the aorta. Correct. Okay. Now what happens is that this is during your systole. So what is this phase here? Systole. So by the way, I'll just mention it here. So S1 is because of the closure of the AV valve, that is your metral and the tricuspid. S2 is because of the closure of your um, aortic and your pulmonary valves okay now, when there is aortic stenosis okay the ventricle is, is is contracting okay so now let's just talk about ventricular system so when the ventricle is contracting so that is the duration between s1 and s2 makes sense okay now it so hence aortic stenosis so there is an obstruction to the outflow of the blood from the ventricle into the aorta and that happens only during systole so this murmur as has to be a systolic murmur okay i took some time to put this but i, I hope you guys understood it okay so now it makes sense the only time when the blood flows from the ventricle into the aorta okay that's when the obstruction is there happens to be in the ventricular systole phase that is the uh, the duration between s1 and s2 so hence this murmur is going to come between s1 and s2 hence it is called as the, it's it belongs to um it's a, it's a systolic murmur okay now uh 
is is it is it same uh, throughout is the intensity same throughout systole no so what really happens here is the murmur intensity will increase and then it will kind of decrease. Now what happens is that at a point the obstruction, it's a crescendo decrescendo pattern. The obstruction will increase, okay, as as in C. The ventricle starts contracting, okay, the, at a, some point during ventricular systole, the contraction is maximum and maximum amount of blood is, you know, being pushed across the valve. So hence the um, turbulence is the highest and hence the intensity of the murmur is highest. So uh, I hope uh, the reason why there is crescent, sorry, crescendo decrescendo pattern is clear. Okay. It's because the obstruction will be maximum at, at a point later than the onset of the system. Okay, so now because there is stenosis, it's quite understandable. The amount of blood coming into the iota is less and hence the perfusion to the brain will be less. So you have uh, presenting features like sync up. Okay, and if in a question there is or even when the patient comes, you get a history of sync up and it is, it is very, uh, first thing that should come to your mind, the differential should be AS. Okay, then um, also this is associated with something called as pulses parvus parvus et tardis okay so what it means is that the pulse okay parvus is tiny so if you if you look at the uh, what do you call the um, volume of the pulse it is low so parvus parvus meaning small okay because the amount of blood that is coming out is less so hence the volume is less and tardis meaning slow okay and you're going to have a slow pulse okay and it's the volume is going to be less why obviously because there's an obstruction there is stenosis fine so uh, we have studied about as so once okay when you think of as the whole pathology should be in front of you okay there's an obstruction blood is not going from the ventricle to atria or the aorta and that happens only during systole it's a systolic murmur and what kind of murmur crescendo decrescendo why is it so because the obstruction will be maximum at a point where there is maximum uh, flow from the ventricle into the aorta and classical feature of this is that uh, you're going to see pulses parvus et tardis okay and the uh, and the murmur is heard better in the at the base of the heart okay because that's the aortic area correct so that makes sense now similarly let's check out another pathology that is we'll go to uh, mr okay we'll talk about ms a little later so we'll talk about mr okay so what happens is you need to study this simultaneously matlab the right sided lesions and the left sided lesions they're pretty much similar everything remains same except that the auscultation areas are different so it's it's almost similar so now we'll talk about mr or tr now what really happens is that uh, if i if i draw a heart here okay this is these are your av valves okay atrioventricular valves now this is supposed to allow blood in a unidirectional way okay flow of blood in a unidirectional way like that now what happens is due to some reason okay the uh, valves okay they start malfunctioning and then you have blood flowing in the opposite direction as well okay that happens when the ventricular pressure exceeds the uh, the atrial pressure only then the blood will go in the opposite direction correct so that results in mr or tr now um let's see what are the reasons usually mr happens because of mi okay myocardial infarction so you know that you have cord tendon if you have basically your valvulets and then you have your cord tendine which is attached to your papillary muscles now when there is ventricular infarct there could be papillary muscle infarct as well so then the cord tendine will not function properly and it cannot hold your valves apart Okay, so what happens is that it becomes flabby and then it will uh, not function. Okay, so there will be um, reverse flow of blood. Now, these murmurs are usually, uh, they're referred to as blowing murmurs. Okay, 
so it is going to be high pitched and holosystolic it remains same okay if i draw it here between s1 to s2 again so now okay let's understand in which phase of uh, cardiac cycle you hear mr or tr murmurs so i told you that the pressure in the ventricle should be more than that of the atria so that the blood will flow in the reverse direction makes sense and that happens only during systole correct so it is again a systolic murmur okay it's going to be a systolic murmur and then it starts early in the cycle because okay the um, ventricular pressures is see our atrial pressures is like low so a slight increase in the ventricular pressure will also exceed that of the atria so hence it's going to be an early systolic murmur so you're going to get hollow the intensity remains same it is blowing murmur high pitched throughout the systole okay and if it is MR, you hear it better in the uh, apex, okay, the apex area. If it is TR, in, it is in the tricuspid area. We have just discussed where these areas lie. Okay, so this is at the apex, that's the metral area. This will be better heard in the tricuspid area. Okay. Good. Okay. Now, we will check out something called there's a condition called MVP okay which is a mit uh, mitral valve prolapse now what happens here is this is not exactly MR it is somewhere it's similar to MR so what happens here is that the valve okay the the cord are tendon they become uh, abnormal okay after a particular phase of uh, your systole so if it is s1 s2 so the the valves function normal the cord tendine are normal okay then after a point what happens is that the, the functioning becomes abnormal and you will start having a late systolic or a mid systolic murmur like that okay so this is usually seen uh, in conditions like um, connective tissue disorders like Marfan's and Ehlers-Danlos. Okay, so again, it, it is basically mid-systolic that is to be remembered. So MVP is associated with two important conditions: Marfan's and Ehlers-Danlos. Basically, connective tissue disorders. Uh, or disorders where you're going to have the myxomatous degeneration okay myxomatous degeneration of the valves so MVP is pretty important I remember my final year exam uh, the short case that I got was um, um, a case of MVP so as in as in I was asked a lot of questions because this was a differential for that okay and um, this forms a very close differential to AS if if at all you've seen okay AS AS was supposed to be crescendo decrescendo pattern and it is seen throughout systole but this is also seen during systole but it is mid systolic so there is some difference okay let's just we'll summarize this in the end but MVP um, things to be kept in mind will be these two and you have to evaluate the patient for any connective tissue disorders and ultimately it can transform into MR okay then uh, next condition let's take up MS okay so MS uh, what happens is mitral stenosis so the moment you hear this you have to get this picture in your mind hard with where exactly is the pathology mm -hmm. and everything becomes easy to uh, you know answer now MS so here is your mitral valve so this is like stenosed obstructed so it is difficult for the blood to flow from atria into the ventricle what happens here as a result the pressure increases here over time okay basically left atrial pressure increases and there will be left atrial hypertrophy makes sense okay now the left ventricle is is not filled correctly okay that also makes sense now uh, here there okay this when does this happen then atria is contracting and the ventricle is filling so this happens during the last phase the end phase of the ventricular diastole correct so hence is it a systolic murmur or a diastolic murmur so now it is a diastolic murmur now is it early or late so it is late diastolic murmur makes sense okay that's why cardiac cycle forms the key 
okay it forms the key to understanding all the murmurs and whole of cvs in fact now so what is okay there is some there's some term called as os i think most of you have heard with respect to ms so there is something called opening snap or os now what happens here is it is due to the rapid opening okay of the uh, leaflets okay so now there is it is um, uh, the mitral valve is like stenosis so the leaflets are weird okay they're abnormal they're pathological here now when they, they are like stuck stenosed stuck okay not exactly completely calcified but they are just stuck now what happens when the atria kind of pushes the blood okay contracts and tries to force the uh, leaflets apart it's going to produce a noise in 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 the very first lecture on cvs it was told that opening of the valve does not make any noise okay that is not physiological only the closing of the valves will produce noise that is what is producing s1 and s2 we have no way seen that opening of valve will produce hard sound so here is a pathological condition where an opening okay it's like imagine you're opening the cork of, from a bottle okay so it's like that pop sound that is going to happen that's going to occur so similarly the middle uh, valve leaflets okay they're stuck they're pathological and they're stuck suddenly rapidly when you try to separate them they're going to open with a pop so that is that noise that is the opening snap okay so i can write it as pop so o with o so you can remember how the the um, mechanism why the os actually occurs okay so now what happens is now let's just try to draw this figure here s1 s2 again s1 so you know it is systolic or diastolic so it is diastolic fine so we need to draw it here it is late diastolic why because that's when the atrial contraction happens now for the murmur to occur the valve has to be uh, i mean it has to like open forcefully so opening snap occurs before the murmur makes sense so there is opening snap okay it opens up wide and then you have the murmur here okay so that's the murmur here late diastolic murmur and there's one more feature here if you can see me i'm drawing a pre-systolic accentuation okay so this is how it is classically um, described in the uh, textbooks okay so there is something called as the pre-systolic accentuation okay so that is about the murmur of ms so things to be highlighted here okay ms the first thing that should come to your mind is okay there is stenosis okay so you need to forcefully open it so you're going to get opening snap first and then you're going to get a late diastolic murmur with pre-systolic accentuation okay and another bit if you've seen read the pathology of ms it is associated with rheumatic heart disease and um, then it is associated with left atrial hypertrophy which in later stages can can you know compress the esophagus okay if you see the anatomy uh, and so on and so forth so it's in the disease pathology that you would see later after this let us um, check out the murmur of ar sorry ar okay ar is aortic regurgitation again simple so what should come to your mind heart like that okay so if Okay, from this left ventricle you have your iota here okay this is your aortic valve okay now aortic regurgitation as in the name itself suggests blood is flowing from the iota back into the ventricle which is not normal but it is happening because the valves are weak okay they cannot maintain unidirectional flow so when does that happen that happens when the pressure in the ventricle goes below iota okay see anything anywhere flow is from a region of higher pressure to lower pressure from region of higher concentration to the lower concentration so now when the blood is flowing okay from aorta into the ventricle that means the aortic pressure is higher than the ventricular pressure and when does that happen when the ventricle is relaxing the pressure in the ventricle will be low correct so that is and the ventricle is in relaxation so it is a ventricular diastole so the murmur of ar is going to be diastolic does that make sense okay now initially what happens okay just 
we have finished the systole the heart has just had a systole so there is a lot of blood in the aorta the pressure in the aorta is high the systolic pressure okay that you know so suddenly the diastole will start okay and then there is opening of the aortic valve abnormal opening of the aortic valve so the gush of blood initially is with a higher pressure because preceding that there was it, the systole just happened okay there's a lot of blood in the aorta and a lot of pressure over there so the initial um, backflow okay so the initial backflow is going to be very rapid right so hence if i try to draw the figure here s1 s2 again s1 here so we know that it is going to be diastolic and the intensity in the beginning okay is high and then there is a gush of blood which is normal okay so this is very important regarding AR fine now um, okay okay so now last is regarding uh, VSD and PDA okay what is VSD PSD is ventricle septal defect. What happens is that this is also going to be a systolic murmur. Okay, why is that? This is heart. Let's just make it vertical here. Okay. There is a defect here. The blood will flow from region of high pressure to low pressure. You know that left ventricle to the right ventricle. So that flow happens when the pressure is high in the left ventricle right so that happens during system right so it is asymmetric you know that the left ventricular wall is thicker so the pressure generated by the left ventricle is way higher so hence throughout the systole blood is going to flow from uh, left ventricle to the right ventricle so it, it looks something like this it's a systolic murmur okay so this is VSD okay fine and next okay uh, this looks very similar to uh, what we saw in MR okay do, do, do you remember MR okay mitral valve weak when, when can the backflow occur only when there is systole that is ventricle is contracting this gush of blood it starts very early on okay that is MR so this is to be differentiated VSD to be differentiated from MR the only uh, the, the most logical point is that the location okay where you hear these murmurs clearly will be different okay MR is going to be at the apex radiating to the uh, sorry uh, at the apex and radiating to the axilla VSD is going to be at the sternal border okay the left of the sternal border so the locations are different now if you're talking about PDA there is an here PDA meaning an abnormal connection okay there is persistent uh, or patent ductus arteriosus connection between the aorta and the pulmonary arteries okay there is a continuous flow of blood continuous irrespective of whether it is systole or diastole because at all times okay the aortic pressure is way higher than the pulmonary pressure okay so we know that so that that is why this is called as continuous murmur so if i just try to draw this here okay so the murmur is like this it's continuous okay so hence this is called continuous machinery or machine like Okay, machine like number. So, in your exam, when you ask other uh, causes or uh, yeah, other causes of uh, uh, machine like murmur or continuous murmur, you can say venous hum, arterial venous fistula connections, and so on. Okay, so now the reason for PDA it could be congenital, I mean, as in uh, the baby is just born and the uh, uh, ductus arteriosus is not formed yet okay? it's still patent okay uh, and then or it could also be um, due to congenital rubella syndrome okay so that is also it will result in PDA so now where do you hear this murmur it is best heard in the left infraclavicular area Okay, in the left infraclavicular area so one thing to be remember this is uh, especially for the mcq point of view that is that this is associated with congenital rubella syndrome okay 
that is to be wrong by. So now here we come to an end of um, discussion of all types of murmurs and uh, as I've told you that we have, if we have discussed one part of it, okay, like see we have done M MR. So TR is almost very similar. We have done AS. So the PS will almost be similar except for the location. Okay. And um, uh, here is a rule actually uh, which will make your life easy. Any named murmur okay any named murmur is usually diastolic okay so this is a cheat code i'm saying you need to understand the mechanism of a production of each and every type of murmur so that you can answer all the questions related to it but um, if if in the exam for some reason you black out or something like that um, you should you should remember that named all named murmurs are diastolic okay so that's the thing there, there's a list of name murmurs in the textbook just just go through that and uh, um okay there's one thing that i need to highlight here um there is something called as the de carvello sign so what happens is that the right sided heart sounds okay or the murmurs whatever it is they become louder on inspiration okay but on the left sided uh, this one sounds or murmurs they become um, uh, more prominent or louder on expiration so this difference okay this sign is called as the carvello sign okay the carvello sign so what does it say right sided will increase on inspiration makes sense inspiration intracranial suppression reduces the immune system uh, increases so more blood is flowing through the right side of the heart so more blood flow more turbulence uh, hence louder is the murmur of the sound okay so that's that and on the left side it increases on expiration so you might have seen you you'll see the uh, explanation the textbook saying uh, for, for murmurs on the left side okay they say this is to be heard in the left la uh, the left decubitus position or left lateral position with uh, at the height of expiration and so on and so forth so now you will understand what exactly is written in the textbook so this whole video is just to do that okay so there is no alternative you need to go back okay and you need to open your textbooks so read the description now you will be in a position to you know kind of understand and comprehend whatever is given okay I'm not saying this is a substitute to reading the textbooks that is a must but this will make your life easier so now uh, when i was in final year i just came about this um, flow chart or a protocol that i created for myself to figure out uh, what exactly the case is so in your exams you sometimes you might get help from your postgraduates but most of the times that doesn't happen so then how do you arrive at a diagnosis in the exam okay first point do not panic okay you know you've studied just stay calm, okay, and now auscultate, see for all the findings, take a good history. If it's short case, you don't have time for taking history, okay, just go step by step, okay. The examination should be done in the order that is taught, okay, that is inspection, um, palpation, percussion, auscultation, do that. So for CVS, percussion doesn't hold much importance, uh, but auscultation is your key point. Now, first is, okay, you have to identify S1 and S2, okay. So how do you do that you auscultate yourself or your friend okay whomever you find just make them sit down okay you auscultate try to identify s1 and s2 okay if you're still getting uh, like it's it's not it's hard okay to say this is s1 s2 for sure what you should do is you need to auscultate your carotid okay right and carotid as in see if you're gonna get a pulse in the carotid that means it is sister correct that's where you're gonna get that stream of blood so hence whatever comes after that will be s2 okay because it's the end of cyst and then you're going to get s2 okay that is a closure of your aortic as well as the pulmonary valves so first is you need to identify how s1 sounds and how s2 sounds which exactly is s1 and s2 after you've done this two is auscultate for the murmur some murmurs are so obvious usually they keep those cases in the exam so when you're going to auscultate you go uh, and auscultate systematically okay your aortic area your pulmonary area then the mitral area tricuspid usually later on okay so mitral area so you auscultate these areas and you're going to hear let's say a murmur 
Now what you need to do is place the murmur whether it is in during the systole or diastole. So once you have figured out S1, S2, now you try to keenly hear where exactly the murmur comes. Is it between S1 and S2 or uh, after S2? Basically you will get to know whether it is systolic murmur or diastolic murmur. Okay. Once you know this, okay, tuck, 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 you need the you need the differentials for systolic and the diastolic, which we just read. Okay, so if it is going to be systolic, you know that okay. If if we start from the left side of the heart, it could be AS. Okay, if we go on the right side, it could be PS. Then you know it could be MR or TR, or if it is throughout the systole, VSD. Okay, so fine. Let me. I know this video is kind of longer than I expected but I think it's worth it okay if it is systolic what are the things that should come to your mind quick AS PS MR okay or TR and VSD okay think of this now if you're going to hear something during the diast diastole okay so that is between basically after your S2 okay basically the carotid pulse okay we've got the carotid pulse then when you hear a murmur later on so that will be during your diastole so here the murmur could be ar it could be pr it could be ms ts so ms just try to hear for the opening snap sometimes it's clear sometimes it's not so clear so okay this should be your differentials for systolic and diastolic murmurs okay and uh, then once you have got a hang of it, just go auscultate uh, each and every patient in your ward, okay, be, uh, be it a serious case or not, because you will, you will know how to differentiate S1, S2, okay, and then when you see an exact case of CVS, you will know where exactly to place the murmur and how to arrive at a diagnosis. So now because there are so many differentials, now uh, you will have to see the history okay history also matters and some other features okay L listen like you have ar you will have peripheral signs okay there are a number of peripheral signs for ar and as will be accompanied with history of syncope or dyspnea or something like that and then in case of uh, ms you will have history of uh, rheumatoid um, i mean a disease they, they would have taken prophylaxis they would have taken uh, antibiotic injections every month so uh, that history is pretty significant history of fever joint pain and so on um, so that's how uh, VSD they could they could be like diagnosed um, early in their life okay they will again give you history of uh, cardiac disease in the past okay so these are all the conditions that uh, uh, things or uh, rather con uh, conditions that will help you uh, differentiate between uh, these diagnoses and then in the end you're going to give your probable diagnosis in your exam it's never a, a pakka you know diagnosis because you need to do a number of investigations to arrive at the exact diagnosis so i think i've done uh, justice in um, explaining the murmurs and heart sounds uh, Okay, there's, there's no replacement to, you know, reading any standard textbook as I've mentioned. So, I uh, hope this video helped. Thank you.